That cliff is surely the highest point on the island. I need to subdue the bees first. They'll do me in for sure if I disrupt their artificial home. There are some suitable looking apples up near the top of this tree, but I can't reach them. I won't do that. what these houses were used for before they were left to rot.
This thicket is rife with thorns. I can't get through it. It's an old windmill, impossible to say what it powers, if anything. I think I heard a click. I could be imagining it, though. I think I heard a click. I could be imagining it, though. Rule Britannia, Britannia rule the waves. Britons never will be slaves. Oh, mix the eyes water a bit. It's a shortwave radio. It could be useful if I could get it working. It seems to be missing quite a few parts. This is an odd sort of power cord. It doesn't seem to fit into a regular socket. Boxes, nothing of use in them. Let me examine this further. I think I heard a click. I could be imagining it, though. Aha! It's open! I 
I see nothing remarkable. I can't take that apart. There's something in this drawer. It's a lone raven-shaped earring. That swapped the positions of the two drawers. There's something in this drawer. It's a fragment of a document. There's something in this drawer. It looks like some sort of microphone. There's something in this drawer. It's a card with some writing on it. This bears a closer look. Let me examine this further. I see nothing remarkable. Rule the waves, of course. What's this? A secret door. I'm surprised the electricity still works in here. Impossible to tell what was once stored in these barrels. This panel seems out of place. These timbers are all that stand between me and being buried alive. I can't open it. It's locked.
This panel seems out of place. There's something here I need. Hello, what do we have here? The water here is rather calm compared to the waves crashing against the rest of this benighted tip. The water here is rather calm compared to the waves crashing against the rest of this benighted tip. like some kind of single-person submersible. Clearly damaged beyond repair, though. The water here is rather calm compared to the waves crashing against the rest of this benighted tip. Excellent, like hand in glove. The water here is rather calm compared to the waves crashing against the rest of this benighted tip. was too strong. I'd best not try that again. It washed me up on this beach. These houses look like they've been abandoned for quite some time. Better to let the dead rest in peace. <sighs> mm. 
this bears a closer look. I take it you don't play snooker, Mr. Narakot. Otherwise, you'd know you should be as still as Lot's wife. I'd swear this wasn't here before. Must be one of Owen's little games. I see nothing remarkable. It opens. There's something inside. I transcribe the pertinent passages in my notebook. Nothing a little elbow grease can't undo. Et voilà.
that works, just barely. Let's hope that holds. I don't think that's appropriate. There, the bees are now fast asleep. All quite drowsy anyhow. Seems so obvious in retrospect. I can't see anything of interest. Let's hope that holds. The flower stuck to bits of it. Aha! A fingerprint! Let me examine this further. Hello, Rogers. Hello, sir. Was there anything you required? Just looking around. That ham looks good. Mrs. Rogers had a way with hams. Baked, boiled, fried, pickled, en casserole. Always a treat. When will dinner be ready? Eight o'clock, sir. Or close to it. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary since you arrived here, Rogers? Just this, sir. 
This house is more like a museum than a residence. I've dusted every square inch, and I found articles left behind by many previous owners, including the Robsons, that actress, and even the Admiralty. The only owners who seem to have left no mark at all are Mr. and Mrs. Owen. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. It's a press. Looks like it can hold quite a large amount of fruit. I need something here to use as a crossbar. Ah, a nice fresh glass of apple juice. I'm half tempted to drink it myself. cider. From the smell, quite potent stuff too. Woodshed is empty. This is a dead end. If Owen's buried under that wood pile, good riddance to him. Have you searched the entire island? Early days yet. Plenty of ground still to cover. Good day to you, Mr. Bloor. The wind is picking up again, and there are white horses on the sea. Has anyone seen the good doctor? Here I am, Judge, just uh, freshening up in my room before dinner. How did your search go, Mr. Lombard? Badly, Judge. I'm afraid I found nothing and lost Mr. Bloor. There's a squall moving in again. Shiprock's become quite windy. Rogers? What is it, man? The figure, sir. The figure's in the middle of the table. Look, now another's gone. There's only seven. It doesn't make sense. What's going on? What's happening? We can discuss this new development over dinner. It's ready, Rogers? Uh, yes, sir. It's only cold tongue and cold ham, sir. We understand, Rogers. Where's the general? Last time I saw him was on that beach. You asked me about him, Miracout. Did you find him there? Yes. Did he say anything to you? His mind was wandering. Perhaps you'd be so good as to fetch the general, Mr. Narricot. We'll delay dinner for you both. No need for that. He's dead. Down there on the beach, leaning against a rock like a stick of driftwood. Chapter 4. Seven little sailor boys chopping up sticks. One chopped himself in halves, and then there were six. Rogers is a first-class butler. I'll say that for him. Wife was a pretty good cook, too. Too bad we only got one meal out of her. Ladies and gentlemen, back to the business at hand. I'm going to ask Mr. Narricot to continue his investigation. But he's the last one who saw the General alive. The last one who is willing to admit to it. Mr. Narricot.
Cause of death, Doctor? The back of his skull was crushed with a blunt instrument. Could the General's death have been an accident? There were multiple wounds. Unless you repeatedly slammed the back of his head against a rock, I think we can safely rule out accident and suicide. Which confirms what we've all come to suspect. The first two deaths were undoubtedly murder as well. I concur. Time of death? Only a few minutes before he was found. Not more than 30 at the outside. Do you have an alibi for that period of time? Why, the judge and I were playing snooker. Forgive me, Doctor, but you went up to your room, if you'll recall. Oh, of course, of course. For a moment or two only. Could you help me sew these sheets together to make a parachute? I'm a medical man, Narapot, not a seamstress. You stitch up patients after surgery, don't you? Yes, and it's very delicate work. Which is why I'll not risk my hands on such a coarse endeavor. Good evening, Doctor. Where were you during the half-hour in question? I won't deny that Lombard and I had split up by then. I was just wondering, collecting my thoughts, you might say. How did you come to find the body? I'd seen the old gent down on the beach when we searched the island. He seemed pretty confused. I saw the storm coming on, knew it was almost supper time. Thought I'd collect him. See anyone else on the beach? No, no one. See anything of a murder weapon? Plenty of solid Devon rocks about. I didn't see any blood, but the rock could have just been tossed in the surf. One said he'd stay right there, and then there were seven. Thank you, Miss Claythorne, for again calling our attention to the rhyme. It is significant without a doubt. We have one dead from having choked himself. Another overslept herself. Now a third wishes to remain in Devon, and his wish is granted to him in a most final manner. Good evening, Mr. Bloor. Where were you during the half hour in question? Up on Ship Rock, where we spoke. The entire time? Yes, until the wind came up. I thought I should get back before the storm. You could see the beach from where you were? I spent most of my time on the far side of the summit. But I did move to a position above the beach once or twice. I saw you talking to the general from there. Yes. He seemed to know he was going to die. Could that be because you were swinging a rock at his head? He was quite alive when I left him. Did you see anyone else on the beach? Yes, I saw Philip. Mr. Lombard and Mr. Bloor walking up the path from the beach. But that was earlier. Anything else you can add, Vera? No, nothing, I'm afraid. Thank you for your time, Miss Glaver. Could you help me sew these sheets together to make a parachute? Better ask Miss Brent. She's placed herself in charge. Thank you for your time, Miss Claythorne. Where were you during the half hour in question? After the doctor and I finished our game, I had a look around the library. I'm surprised to say I found one of my own books in there. I wonder which of the previous inhabitants of the island it belonged to. Why not Owen? My dear Mr. Bloor, it was perfectly clear to me some time ago, and after your search, you must realize now as well, Mr. Owen is on this island. He, or she, is one of us. No, no, no. Young lady, this is no time for refusing to look facts in the face. We are all in grave danger. One of us is Mr. Unknown, and Mr. Unknown has no good planned for us. I'm a well-known professional man. The mere idea that I could be suspected of murder is preposterous. I, too, am a well-known person. That, my dear sir, proves less than nothing. Doctors have gone mad before now. Judges have gone mad. So have policemen. What do you think we should do, Judge? Be on our guard, especially at night. I'd suggest prayer. I'm not adverse to prayer, Miss Brent, but I would supplement it with a locked door. Anything else you'd like to add? Yes. I've been asked why I trust you, Mr. Narricot, our odd man out, to lead these informal inquiries of ours. It is very simple. It is clear to me that Mr. Owen had not planned on you stopping here on the island with us. Unless Bloor is Owen. Stow that talk, Doctor. An attempt has been made on your life. 
So he says. Right now, there is no one I trust more to get us out of this predicament. Brutally spoken, Judge. I know you'll pardon me for saying this, but if you are Owen, you might want a bumbling amateur on the case more than a professional like Bloor. I would hope we all answer Mr. Bloor's questions with equal candor. Too right. I've got a plan to get off the island. Can you help me build a parachute? I'm not as strong as I once was, I'm afraid. Perhaps some of the others can assist you. Thank you kindly, Judge. Where were you during the half hour in question? On the front patio, knitting. I'd been there since just after breakfast. You spoke with me there. We saw her too after we'd searched the house. Thank you, Mr. Lombard, but I feel bound to add that there were many stretches of time throughout the morning when I was quite alone. Who else did you see? Almost everyone at one time or another, I should think. I saw the general walk off along that path towards Ship Rock. A minute or two later, Miss Claythorne headed in the same direction. He went to the beach. I climbed the rock. Rogers was also near me for a time, sweeping away some of the debris on the patio from last night's storm. Very tidy chap, that Rogers. I don't know if it's important, but I heard someone up above me near the telescope, but I don't know who it was. Could you help me sew these sheets together to make a parachute? I suppose I could. There's a sewing kit in the servants' quarters. The needles would work, but I don't think the thread would be strong enough. I won't take up any more of your time, Miss Brent. Where were you during the half hour in question? After Bloor wandered off, I went back to that ruined fishing village. It seemed the most likely place for Owen to be hiding. When the weather closed in, I made a dash back here to the house. Find any trace of Owen or anyone else on the island apart from us? No, I wish I had. Anything else you'd like to add? Not at the moment. Do you think I should use the parachute to try and reach the mainland? Yes. I think I'll feel a lot safer with you gone. Could you assist me with your plan? I handed it to you on a platter, Narakout. Surely others can help you with the menial work. I will pilot it for you, however. That better be my job. As you like. Thanks for your time, Mr. Lombard. Now is not the time for chatter. Where were you during the half hour in question? Mostly in the kitchen, sir, preparing dinner. I also washed dishes, swept the patio, where I saw Miss Brent knitting. Quietly cleaned the game room so as not to disturb the doctor and the judge. Made the beds and chopped some more firewood. Good evening, Mr. Rogers. If I may sum up, we're trapped on this island at least till Monday morning. One of us is most certainly a homicidal maniac. None of us has a clear alibi for the time in which the General met his death. Have I forgotten anything? Yes, it's storming again. This might be a good time to explore the house unhindered. These will work splendidly. moves in far more mysterious ways than you can ever hope to uncover. Perhaps, Miss Brent, but I'm still willing to have a go. Who do you think the killer is? Very well. I'll humor you. Mr. Bloor seems the most likely suspect. Why? He's already admitted he's checked up on all of us as part of his supposed job for Mr. Owen. People with secrets, especially those with secrets concerning possible murders, don't make their complicity common knowledge. 
It would take a man like Mr. Bloor to ferret it out. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? Forgive me, but I doubt he takes you very seriously. That leaves the judge as the biggest threat. Yes, if I were the killer, I'd go after the judge next. That is all, Miss Brett. I hope that softens her disposition towards me somewhat. Are you sure you can't tell me anything more about seeing Miss Claythorne at a hotel near St. Trednick's? I wonder how you heard that. I was staying near the place where that boy Cyril Hamilton's death occurred. Miss Claythorne acted as if she'd never been to the place, but I see no reason to say any more about it. Thank you, Miss Brent. Dr. Armstrong? What? What? I must say, I don't think much of this barging in on people when they... when they are... Ministering to the sick? I don't find that amusing, sir. Not in the slightest. Dr. Armstrong, if it will relieve your mind at all, I don't think there's anyone alive on this island who truly believes you are a teetotaler. Somehow that doesn't relieve my mind one bit. You protest too much, then I the drinks tray as if it were mana from heaven. You sneak off to your room to freshen up every chance you get. All right, Mr. Narakot, you've made your point. What do you want? Who do you think is the killer? Miss Brent. Knitting. Always knitting. Like Madame Defarge in A Tale of Two Cities. Madame Defarge knitted the names of those destined for the guillotine. Revenge, sir. It seems an apt analogy. Also, I don't much like Bible thumpers. Have you any proof? Proof, sir, is for the police. I have a doctor's instincts. My instinct tells me that anyone that self-righteous and repressed might easily turn to murder. What did she call Mrs. Rogers' death? An act of God. A woman like that could easily cast herself in the role of God's sword. Any idea who Mr. Owen's next victim might be? No idea, but I assure you I plan to see it as not I. Better lock your door then, Doctor. I walked right in. Thank you for your time, Doctor. Perhaps another time. Perhaps that will satiate the good doctor's sweet tooth. Are you sure you can't tell me any gossip surrounding the Seton case? Gossip, my eye. I got it directly from Sir John Matthews, KC, who was observing. Not a doubt of the verdict. Acquittal was certain until Wargrave's summing up. What did Matthew say went wrong? Sir John thought that Wargrave's well-known ego had grown even bigger than he himself could handle. That he swung the case against Seaton for the sheer joy of doing it, simply because he could. That's a serious accusation. There was another similar incident just last year. Hushed up, of course, but the word was the judge's retirement couldn't have come at a better time for him. However, I feel obligated to add that the judge still has a fine old brain. I have no trouble whatsoever in saying that I rest easier knowing he has put his mind to solving our present predicament. Thank you for your time, Doctor. I copied the contents into my notebook.
The body was thoroughly searched. No need to disturb it now. I copied the contents into my notebook. This could use a closer look. I copied the contents into my notebook. Polished marble spheres and some books. Nothing worth investigating further. <laughs> 